Hey guys, welcome to the Ebbs and Flow podcast. Uh, I'm back for another episode. Today we're joined by Jack Bird and Tyrell Sloan from the Dragons. Really, really good chat. Um, Birdie showed a side that um, not many people would be exposed to, but he's a really good man and obviously young Tyrell, 21 years of age and a very mature young guy with a great head on his shoulders. But I know you're going to love this one for sure. Half asleep and I just hear <laughs> <laughs> this kind of noise. I'm looking. That's just the reason why I don't do it, just because I've seen bad side of things. I'm like, fuck. I don't want to work, man. I want to. Nah. Welcome, boys. Jack Bird, Tyrell Sloan. How are we going? Good, brother. How are you going? Yeah, good. Thanks, mate. Thanks for asking. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. <laughs> how you going, Tyrell? Good. How are you hitting them? Good, mate. Yeah, good, good, good. <laughs> Birdie, you're uh, you're out at the moment with an injury. How's the body going? And when do we expect to see the big guy back? Yeah, bro. It's um, been a while, man. Like it's been a month and a half, I think since I've started getting a bit of knee pain and I've been trying to train and play with it, but it's just, yeah, it's not coping too well. But um, you know, hopefully a few more weeks out and um, you know, hopefully I can come back next week. But um, you know, I'm just trying to get that right, get my body right for the back end of the season. And um, you know what it's like when you get injured, man, you, you don't want to go out there half undone. And um, yeah, man, and obviously I've had some knee injuries in the past, so I'm just trying to look after that and trying to get back on track and um, get back healthy and fit. Mate, 100% brother. Uh, Tyrell obviously played Cronulla last night. It was a bit of a tough game. Um, how'd you pull up? The body okay? And how were the troops after the game? Yeah, body's sweet. Um, you know, the club's in a bit of a rough patch at the moment. And, um, you know, attitude is always great at the club. And um, outside looking in, it probably doesn't look like that. But uh, we have a tiny group. And, um, yeah, obviously it was a tough loss last night. But, um, you know, we're just trying to take it week by week and continue to get better and um, keep turning up. I think that's, you know, sometimes, you know, outside people can have a view on rugby league play, players and what's going on. And, um, you know, there's never a point when you're a rugby league player where you're not actually trying, just things aren't happening. And even at the start of the year where you boys, I think you lost six games um, by a combined 12 points or something. So you win them, you, you, you're right in the mix, in the top four. So, you know, that effort has been there um, and you're trying hard, but I think the confidence and execution is sort of down at the moment but um yeah still a few games to go in the year and hopefully see the big boy back out there and Tyrell cut carving up but um mate let's dive uh but into where, where you both grew up down the gong um birdie i did a bit of research on you mate and i did know this i actually remember 2012 when i was at the dragons and robert finch or craig young was talking about um this little whippersnipper who had rheumatoid arthritis and that was you how like how, like, how did that affect you as a kid and um, you know, you touched on your knees now. Is it still affecting <coughs> you now? And how do you manage that? Yeah, so um, with the rheumatoid, um, so I did an ACL uh, when I was 16, um, playing Ostag. I was in the junior reps at the Dragons, and um, I just I wasn't even meant to play. I was filling in for my cousin. So I went and, as a young kid, you always want to play Ostag, play touch, and all that kind of stuff. So I used to do that a lot. Um, did a step, done my, done my ACL. Um, and then a few months later, I started getting a bit uh, sore in the wrists and elbows and stuff like that, and I always thought that it was just from the crutches. Um, and then did blood tests and all that kind of stuff, nothing really come back. Um, and then my left knee at the time was my good knee, and then that, that blew up like a balloon, and it was hot. I uh, couldn't really walk on it. Uh, we took fluid out of that, and it came back with rheumatoid arthritis, and then... Um, yeah, man, ever since, like, I've been on uh, medication, taking an injection every week, or every fortnight was weekly then. Now I'm back on weekly. Um, take, you know, tablets every week. It's kind of hard to stay on top of it because it's like, you know, when you get used to something over and over again, you kind of forget and you just think, you know, take it for granted a little bit. Yep. Um, but, yeah, I'm still taking the needles uh, every week now and uh, trying to stay on top of that. But um, the rheumatoid, man, it's, uh, it's in remission at the moment. Like, it's been in remission since I was 16, 17 years old. And, um, you know, I'm feeling good personally with, with the rheumatoid kind of stuff. But, you know, with the knee now, like, we've, we've tested for, for the rheumatoid on that and, and it's come back clear. So my um, rheumatologist, he, he's happy with how that's going. And, um, yeah, man, so I'm just trying to, with the injuries now, I'm just trying to get down to the bottom of it to see what it is. There's a bit of fluid in there, but uh, it's got nothing to do with the rheumatoid, and um, hopefully it's just uh, just a little bit of um, wear and tear in there, and hopefully I can get, get back out on the paddock soon. Yep, and then uh, Tyrell, um, obviously you got to debut for your junior club. Um, your, your family history and your upbringing is well documented, and 
I, I still remember I was there on your debut night and yep. um, the photo with all your family and I think I saw you at the legs club after and obviously yeah. you were smiling like a Cheshire cat. Um, you know, ha, ha, how was your upbringing and then to then go on and play for the Dragons? Um, can you give us a bit of uh, yeah info on that and yeah. ha, how that journey was? Yeah, so I grew up in I was grew up in Dapto, yep. um, Kunawara. Um, yeah, just played footy for Dapto Canaries, uh, under sixes uh, to under 18s and um, yeah, progressed through obviously how Matt's and SG ball uh, with the Steelers there and um, played alongside a few of the boys there, like Junior Moan, Figua boys, um, Joshy Korak, who's also in our system. Um, and yeah, um, sort of made a quick transition from, I guess, SJ Boy into first grade. Um, probably happened a bit quicker than, I guess, most players, but, um, you know, Hook at the time trusted me to, and gave me a game. And he also told me throughout the week that, um, you know, it sort of happened a lot quicker than he would have liked. But uh, just being in the situation, um, you know, sort of want to go with two hands. You know, and try to get my hand on the ball as much as I could. Um, and yeah, it was pretty cool, you know, I get to debut in Wollongong and uh, in front of all my family and friends. And um, you know, it's also close to home, only 10 minutes down the road. So, um, you know, it's, it's been a cool experience. And, um, you know, I love my footy so far. And, um, you know, being at this club is, it's sort of a blessing for myself because, um, you know, obviously being a local junior, you have a lot of pride in the jersey. And um, I feel like it means a, a lot more to you know the local juniors to the players that come in, but um, you know for myself now it's it's going to be a bit of a challenge. But you know to get to get this club back where it needs to be, uh, I want to be a part of it. And you know going for what we're going for now, I'm still enjoying it, and um, I'm sure there's going to be better days ahead. Mate, for sure, uh, mate. What 28, 29 games in now? You've already uh, doubled my uh, <laughs> the tries I scored. Just got another great try last night. Um, you know, ho hopefully the Dragons fans get to see that uh, for the next 10 years and um, plenty of success with that as well. Definitely. Um, Birdie, uh, obviously you're a Dragons junior, um, moved on uh, before you got to play first <coughs> grade, went to Cronulla. You won a comp in your second year, uh, played for New South Wales, Dally M Rookie of the Year, uh, uh, you know, went to Broncos, had a couple of really injury disrupted years up there and... Then now back in uh, back in the gong, mate. How, how's you know that journey to go full circle and come back to the club you grew up as a kid supporting and who you loved? I didn't support the Dragons. Oh no, no, I didn't. Um, actually, supported the Knights, but um, last <laughs> um, yeah, it's but it's got um, a bit flaccid that whole microphone on you. Yeah, bro. It, keeps fall, it keeps dropping down, man. Hey, look, um, that's what she said. <laughs> I'll get back up, but it's right. Um, yeah, so like you said, I was a Dragons junior, came through the ranks there. I um, it was actually 20, so I did my knee in 2012, I think it was. Come back in 20, no, I did my knee in 2011, back in 2011. Sat out the whole year 2012, come back like back mid-year 2013 because um, of the rheumatoid and stuff like that. Kind of delayed the process of doing the rehab. Um, and then 2014 played 20s at the Dragons, and then the Dragons didn't want to resign. I think they wanted to resign me for one more year, but um, I got the opportunity to go to the Sharks for two years. Um, and I knew that I wanted to play first grade, so uh, I think the Sharks won the wooden spoon the year before, the year before, like two years before that. Um, so I just thought that was the best opportunity for me to get in the first grade. Um, went up there, and uh, yeah, man, I, I loved every moment up there. You know, that was probably the most enjoyable my career was, um, especially when big the GOAT came at, <laughs> in 20, what, 17, I think it was. 2017, right, yeah. 2017, yeah. and uh, I think that's what drove me out of the Sharks. <laughs> hey, I left before you, didn't I? Did you go no, same time? No, I left 2018, bro. But I was I hitting run. I 2018, so okay. you, you pretty drove me out of there. I think I think I, I left because you left. I was like, fuck it, bird out here, I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, man, it was uh, it was good up, up, up with the Sharks, and then... Um, you know, I kind of wanted to stay there, but there was a few things going on behind the scenes. They were, they were trying to sign other players and stuff like that. So there wasn't much um, room for me to, to stay. So I le left to the, uh, the Broncos. And yeah, that was a hard time up there. Ob obviously, I had some uh, injuries and that and kind of st stuff like that. But uh, I mean, it's, um, it's made me who I am today, I guess, like the person I am. Uh, you know, I don't take things for granted anymore. That's for sure. Um, you know, in the blink of an eye, you can you can 
stop playing rugby league because of the injuries you have. So, you know, I was pretty close on, on giving it up at some stages, but um, I think at the end of the day, that this is all I've ever wanted to do was play first grade and play football. So, uh, you got to think about when you were a young kid and, and where you want to be and um, what you want to do. So, <clears throat> I kind of thought about that and um, that made me, you know, the drive to make me keep going and, and get back on my feet. And then I come to the Dragons where I never thought I'd probably end up again um, after, after my first stint here. And being a local junior, like Tyrell be said before, it means a lot to the, you know, to the locals and, and the, the um, community and um, having my family down there and all my friends that I grew up with. Uh, it's something special, but, um, you know, I've had a few, you know, back-to-back -back seasons uh, playing, playing now, but obviously starting to get injured a little bit again now, but you know, hopefully it's nothing too major. And, um, yeah, man, hopefully I've got a few more years left in the tank because I'm only 28 and hopefully I can retire when I'm 34 and start doing what you do and, and earn your top money. <laughs> Please, mate. <laughs> um... Mate, you, yeah, you touched on, yeah, obviously you started your year, you played over 20 games in nearly every year, ha had that three injury to disrupted years. And then I, I did see that, yeah, your last two seasons, you played over 20 games. And, mate, I, I do tell you, my effing favourite player, <laughs> um, even my son knows that, he gets, uh, he got a Jack Bird footy card and he, um, he gave, he, it, to you he and gave you, it to me and, yeah, and I put it in the bin. Nah, nah, I'm afraid, I'm But um, I know, I, and for, for the pe people sort of listening and watching, you know, Jack can, um, you know, he may rub people up the wrong way sometimes, but he's the most loyal, passionate, caring. And I don't often piss in your pocket like this, but I will. But you care so much about, you know, everything to do with your footy and, you know, your friends and family. So I hope people realise when you speak, you speak from the heart and um, they can understand, yeah, get a bit of an insight to what you like because you do care. And yeah. I, I always laugh when... I fucking watch you play and you're getting up and you're pushing and you're looking to fight someone all the time because you I, play with so much passion. I just, yeah, that just comes with the game. Like, I hate losing. Um, and like you said, most people don't know who I am and, and what I'm like as a person. Like, I, I might, like you said, rub people up the wrong way. And sometimes I, I speak before I think. Yeah. And I speak my mind and it come, comes out the wrong way sometimes. But it does come from a, you know, a soft spot in the heart. Like, I, I don't mean it sometimes in that type of way what they think. But... You know, I'm a, I'm a realist, man. I, I like being real. I don't like being fake. I like being myself. And that's all you can ask from, from someone. You know, you, you know, if someone's fake, you don't know what, what type of person you're going to get day in, day out. So I just like speaking the mind and tell them to fuck off if I, if I have to. But, <laughs> Mate, um, 100%. And that's why I want to talk about that because um, obviously, you know, the people that know you and your, your friendship group and your family obviously love you and know who you are. But I don't think some people... Because if they only see what's in the public eye, they don't know um, you boys behind the camera or, um, you know, on a personal level. But, you know, you're a good man and I just wanted to make that known. Thanks, lads. You appreciate it. After this, though, don't talk to me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Tyrell, mate. You, so you mentioned you touched about Junior and Bud and the boys. So, yeah. mate, how, how's that? And I think, you know, for the Dragons in the future, you know, you boys coming through and playing that footy together will hold us in good stead. But h how's that now? You know, sort of these boys you used to play backyard footy with and all your junior footy um, to now be out living, living your dreams, playing for uh, the Dragons. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, I grew up with Junes playing against him um, and then started playing with him in uh, junior reps and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, it's, it is cool to play on the field again, uh, with them. Um, you know, it's, it's sort of weird too, you know, like he's, you know, I played against Junior my whole life. Um, he was a West Devils junior and I was obviously Canaries junior. So, um, and then now to be on the big stage, I guess, um, together and also the uh, Matty Figua, uh, he's he's a local, oh, he's a junior from West Devils as well, but he come from Leeton. Um, you know, having those boys there makes it a lot easier. Like, I remember my first preseason, um, you know, Birdie was there. I didn't, I didn't know much about Birdie until the last couple of years, so I've gotten real close with Bird. Um, but I used to play Fortnite with him as well yeah, before I come to the club. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. a little funny story. Um, <laughs> Birdie's best mates with uh, Bud's brother-in-law and um, they used to play Fortnite together and you know, I jumped on there when, when I could and I'm shit at it. But um, <laughs> I, used to be, I used to go mute because I was always nervous. Like, oh, I'm playing with an NRL player, you know? Because <laughs> he was at Broncos at the time. Yeah, and, yeah the Bronx. And, well, now look at us now. Now we're close. We're brothers <laughs> now and... Mate, that's what you love to see, mate. He doesn't mate. play Fortnite with me anymore. Nah, because he dogs me. It's too busy fun. buying houses. Mate, <laughs> hey, that's good, mate. <laughs> but yeah, no, giving back to that, it's, it is cool to play with the boys and um, you know, something I don't take for granted as well. Um, you know, not only for them, but for myself as well. It's a, 
it's a good position that um, you know we're in, and I'm very grateful to be in this position. But I also worked hard for it too. Yeah, you do, mate. And that's, uh, yeah, oh, like I touched on, I can't wait to see over the next few years. And obviously, I'll, I'll get to Shane Flanagan shortly, but um, yeah, it should, should be good to watch yeah, for dad. Nose dad. dad. Um, no, <laughs> just talking about you two boys, I actually got a tip up. Um, you use a roomies on away trips. Uh, I, he- I heard there's been a few incidents uh, <laughs> in, in the rooms. Um, I'll throw to Jack first, or actually, no, yeah, I'll, no, I'll let you go, go first. Go. I'll go you first and then I'll let Tyrell we'll respond. Yeah, so I've changed roommates about three times this year because Sloaney wanted to room me, so I had to make some tough calls to cut <laughs> with Dozer at the start. And then I kind of had to Oh, the captain doesn't get his own room? No, he, no, likes, he likes being he with people. Okay. So, but um, he just sits there and watches the horse racing or cows or whatever, <laughs> whatever it is. I don't know. He likes buying cows or whatever it is. So I'm just sitting there, I'm like, fuck this. Man, I'm not into this stuff. I like want to have some fun. Yeah. So I signed him wanted to come with me, and I asked the fellow if we can swap. And then um, little did I know, Sloane is a big sleep talker and like sleepwalking around and that. <laughs> like, fuck, one night I'm sleeping and I'm like half asleep, and I just hear <laughs> <laughs> this kind of noise. I'm looking at him, he's like, fuck. Hard dead asleep. I'm what like, a fuck. good reason for it. Oh, fuck me, dad. What's going on over <laughs> And then I fell asleep and I woke, woke up again. And in my bed <laughs> snuggling me in that <laughs> oh, Tyrell do you want to respond to this so you're a bed hopper you've jumped in bed yeah. with Jack Bird oh, I just like cuddles bro I mean, you know, he's a bit thick at so I, I get to hug him and he's very cuddly yeah he's very cuddly well, I get the big bed he gets the little single bed yeah, so I'm mad they blame him yeah well rookie but you know, yeah. I have to pay respect to my elders but um, <laughs> respect to my elders <laughs> No, nah, he's, he's a big bear, so I get to cuddle him. So. No, nah, it's good, but because he doesn't even go to bed that late. I'm trying to get to bed at like 11. He's still up watching TikTok. I use Bo to go to bed late. No, nah, I like going to bed early on game night. Like, it depends um, what, pizza, time, what time we play. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like getting pizza before game day. Cause you get play. the carbs, carbs yeah, 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 correct, correct. You know, yeah. get it going and that. Like, that's probably why I look like Blocker on, on the <laughs> 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 Blocker's Blake Laurie for uh, those listening and watching. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Blake. Yeah, big Blocker. <laughs> um, Tyrell, uh, yeah, sorry, you're both of um, in- Indigenous background, but I-, I spoke to you before. You obviously don't drink and, um, mate, very commendable, and especially in this day and age, you know, with peer pressure and yeah. different things. But uh, then being a, a role model in the Indigenous community, um, what does your culture mean to you? And, um, you know, for yourself, your, your choice to not drink? I don't drink. I, I didn't say that to you, Jack. I looked at Tyrell. <laughs> yeah, I'm Radjuri Boy. Uh, my family's all out from Condoblin, but I grew up down here. And um, obviously my nan raised me. So, um, yeah, she, she installed in us at a young age, um, you know, the good and bad. And um, obviously you know what the good and bad is when you're a young kid. But, um, yeah, I grew up along uh, around... A lot of drugs and alcohol and um that's just the reason why i don't do it is because i've seen you know the bad side of things and um you know it's sort of put me in the right direction because you know i've only seen the bad of it so um but i respect the boys you know whenever there's a drink up you know I always go there and um is that taxi yeah sort yep. of look after the boys um so yeah but i always yeah i just said i respect you know what the boys do and um i'll get amongst it but obviously not to an extent yeah um but yeah, as you said, I don't drink just because, you know, the, ba- the sort of the bad things that I've seen and, um, you yeah, know, I guess nothing more to it. Yeah, man, that's awesome. And, and so that, that's, I wish I had, like, for myself had well, that that's what power. That's saying, yeah. saying that, like, I respect the boys that don't drink because, yeah. like, growing up as a young kid, like, you get brought up around these things and you got older brothers or whatever that drink and do whatever, cousins. And you always look up to them when you're a young fellow and you're like, oh, I want to do what they do. Why can't I do it now? Blah, blah, blah. But then, you know, when it's... When it's your time, like, I don't know what it feels like for him because he might feel pressured sometime to drink and he's like, I want to try it one day. But his um, diligence is outstanding and he, and he actually hasn't even said, I want to drink today or anything like that. So it's pretty pretty tough to do in his shoes. Like, coming from me, I probably I started drinking when I was young. Yeah, so. but then, it's, yeah, like, obviously now in the NRL, bit of fame, um, it'd be easy to go and oh, no, I might start having a drink, but you've stuck solid to your values and yeah. obviously hearing about that history, you, you got to yeah. take your hat off and, um, yeah, you are a role model now to um, young kids and especially young Indigenous kids. Yeah, started definitely. drinking when I was like two, but... <laughs> <laughs> Come on, mate. Well, mate, that's a... Oh, for me, I, I went seven Just weeks... Out of the <laughs> <laughs> that was my schooner, mate. Get blind, get blind off of that. <laughs> I, I, I went seven weeks without drinking before I did this first podcast on here. 
went till six in the morning and I come in on the Monday and my like head was off and I was just like, why do I drink? Like, and I wish I had the power to stay off it for 52 weeks of the year, but right. seven weeks is a... Alcohol is like definitely the biggest drug, man. Yeah, like, yeah. People get so... Because they can tax that. it. But like, I don't... Every time I drink, bro, the next day I wake up, I'm like, I'm never drinking again. Mm. Two days later, I'm ready to go again. I'm like, let's move. It's a cycle. <laughs> hopefully we can break that cycle. Birdie, oh, me day, and you, mate. we need to hang out with Tyrell more. <laughs> I just need to stop talking to you. Yeah, me. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, back to footy, boys. Um, so, change of coach this year, Anthony Griffin. Um, you know, last year was well documented about the, um, the ups and downs with him and um, you know, I got coached by Hook myself and I actually got along well with him. I, I didn't play that well when he was my coach and I got a couple of great sprays off him. <laughs> did uh, any of you boys get a great spray off him? And, um, you know, what, what, what did, you know, you, you mentioned he'd give you a debut. So, you, you know, you, you got gratitude to him for the, the rest of your life. But, um, you know, what were your thoughts on everything? And, um, yeah. Give it. Like I said, I, Hook's a great fellow. Like, I got along with Hook. Yeah. Like, you could sit down and have a beer with him, have a yarn. Yeah. Um... Obviously, things didn't go the right way down there uh, with coaching. Um, you know, I kind of feel sorry for him. Um, you know, he got me back to the club, so I've got to, you know, throw some gratitude to him yep. for that. Because, you know, coming from the Bronx, no one really wanted me because of my injuries. You know, he threw me a, um, a second chance there, I guess, in, in a way of coming back home and being around the family and um, being my local club. Uh, so I thank him for that. You know, like I said, he's a great bloke, great coach. Just things didn't work out. and um, I probably did get a spray a few times, but it wasn't really like bad ones because like, me and him got along pretty well. So. Yeah. And I can't really take a spray off. If I get sprayed, I spray back. <laughs> you got to pick personality types for your spray. And yeah, I probably like, know, I needed it. Whereas like a, you're like going to get up and try like and fight him. Like I said before, but like I, I speak before I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like if someone sprays me and I think I'm in the wrong, I'm like, fuck. I need to say something back. Like I, I don't like sitting back and just copping it. But if I know I'm in the wrong, like I'll cop it. But yeah. like, I just just not who I am, eh? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I don't think I got a big spray. I think like I got in trouble a little bit, like when the barbecue stuff went down yeah. and all that kind of stuff. But um, wasn't like massive spray. But it, he was off me a fair bit when when that yeah. barbecue shit happened. Yeah, no, that's fair enough too. Um, well, not really. Like, huh? what's, what's COVID now? <laughs> yeah, I know. No, forgotten thing. Oh, hey. oh. I saw Josh Dugan the other day was getting still going to court for that from bloody yeah, a year and a half ago. Just let them slide. Like, who yeah. cares? COVID's not a thing anymore. Yeah, I know. And what about you? Yeah, so over to you, Tyrell. Yeah, obviously, Hook gave me my debut. So i um, always grateful for that. And uh, yeah, I want to thank him for that. But um, yeah, obviously, we went through the ups and downs there. And um, I've always said it whenever I get asked, I was definitely a bit of a sook then. And I didn't didn't know, I guess, what it was to be like an NRL player week in, week out. And, you know, probably thought I deserved it more than, you know, I put the work in for it. And, um, you know, I do understand what happened and, you know, what went through. And, um, you know, now I've, it's put me in a better position this year to, I guess, play more footy and keep learning. And, you know, I'm still only 21 years old. So, you know, I probably thought, oh, career's over because I'm not playing mm. in a full season at 20 years old. So, um but now looking back, I understand now, and um, I'm I'm sort of grateful for that um, position I got put into because taught me to grow up and you know act like a man instead of being treated like a little kid. Mate, that's unreal, and for you to acknowledge that now at the age of 21, and you have played every game this year. Um, I, I think even for myself, I look back on my early <laughs> stages, and <coughs> I think it took me about five years to play 50 games, and it was always someone else's fault. Whereas, you know, reflecting that built my resilience and yep. give me a greater appreciation for being in the NRL. And um, obviously then I'd look back and like, yeah, look, that was my fault. I was shit. There was better players than me. Um, I needed to learn. So You're the goat, brother. Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> Off the field, bro. Not on the field. <laughs> I was an average rugby league player. Um, hey, you and still then, played one more than the average. Yeah, no, thank you, my brother. Um, and then Kari. How are you finding Kari? Ryan Carr, the, the, the interim Dragons coach. Oh, you talk, mate. Yeah, for well, me, I haven't been playing, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. I haven't been getting coached much. Him. <laughs> no, for me, he's been good for myself. Um, yeah, he was the attacking coach at the start of the year, so um, you know he's helped my, helped a lot with my attack. Um, I felt like the football is sort of my style, you know, a bit more free and um, you know gets my hands on the ball a bit more than previous years. But um, you know, Curry's someone that you know I got along with a lot because he's. Um, I don't know, just the way he talks and he helps me personally and that's the reason why 
you know, I get along with him a lot. And um, just the footy, as I said, he plays. And um, you know, now he's in that head coaching role. Um, obviously, he's got it for the rest of the year. And, um, you know, he's a good bloke and, you know, something I get along with. So, yeah. Yeah. I like Curry. Um, ever since he got to the club, he's brought, you know, a different aura, different attitude towards training. He wants to win too. He's very right? passionate, yeah. as you can see. Very like, passionate. he hates losing. Um, and he's he's a realist as well. Like, he'll tell you straight up to your face what you've done wrong, what you've got to work on, which is great from a coach. Because when you have coaches that, you know, tell you this, but then they, you know that's not the reason why. Like, say if you get dropped, they won't yep. tell you why exactly, where he'll tell you straight to the point. Um, and what you got to work on. So uh, I love him for that. Uh, he's a great bloke. Um, you know, someone you can be friends with after footy for sure. Yeah, yeah. And well, he's, he's only, what, 33, 34? Yeah, he's only well, young he's fella. the same age as Dozer, I think. Okay, there, there you go. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, eh? Um, quickly before we jump to Flano, um, <coughs> mate, just in the locker room, um, you know, boys getting nude in the, uh, in the shower. Tyrell, I heard you wanted the first to get your kid off. Is that, is that fair dinkum or...? <laughs> Well, think? when Curry was here, I mean, yeah. he'd, he'd, he'd probably play footy nerdy. <laughs> he, could, he, would. he loves being naked. <laughs> after the well, mate, I remember back to when I was at the Dragons. I still wear <laughs> me budgies, so I hide me. <laughs> <laughs> what, the, full, the, the wetsuit into the shower? <laughs> yeah, I full wear board shorts and everything. No, yeah, I, I, <laughs> 2018, 2019, DeBellin and Yui Aiken would just be on the ground stretching nude. Bomber, and like, they both get, look great, they look great right? nude, but yeah. mate, they're, they're fully nude on the floor. Bomber gets naked a fair bit. He's nude yeah. in the ice bath. Huh? He, 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 he doesn't get around naked. Oh, Sony, you wear budgies, eh? Yeah, I wear budgies. Yeah. budgies. I was more implying what you were telling me the other oh, day. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I can't say that on camera, man. What, the baby arm? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Shane Flanagan, mate. So um, obviously you won a comp with him, Birdie. Um, your, your dad, uh, your brother Kyle, is he coming back? But yeah, what, what, <laughs> you know, what, what do you think he can bring to the club? And um, you know, for the Dragons fans who are listening and watching, um, you know, what can they look forward to with Flano? Yeah, Flano's massive. Um, you know, obviously, I played under him for three years at the Sharks, won a comp under him. Probably played my best footy under him. So, you know, I'm, I'm excited myself to, to be coached by him again. Um, I think he's just going to bring a whole different attitude uh, towards training and all that kind of stuff. Like, he's the type that you've been coached mm. by him. He, he brings the team together. Uh, he makes us close. You know, when I was at the Sharks, we've, we've always went off a thing where, like, if you can trust someone off the field, you can trust them on the field. So... We're always tied to the Sharks. Like, we were all good mates there. Always, you know, whatever we did, we did it together. Yeah. Um, I think that's something that he brings that he's pretty strong on. Um, I don't know about his son, Kyle. I don't know if he's coming or not. Um, oh, yeah, that was just a toss-up. Yeah, no well, idea. I don't know, man. Like, <laughs> I don't know if he's going to come or yeah. not. Like, I, I haven't really spoke to Flannel about that. Like, I've spoke to him about what my role is next yeah. year and, and what he wants me to do. Um, but, yeah, I'm excited, man. I'm excited to get him back. Uh, back at the club, I'm, I'm happy for him to get his coaching gig back. Yep. You know, be a head coach. He's been waiting a while now, so um, and I'm just grateful for it to be at the Dragons where I am. Yeah. Um, so you know, hopefully I can get back to playing good footy under him, and you know, he probably knows my my body best besides me. Yeah. Um, so hopefully he can get me back on the paddock and and playing good footy. Yep. Yep. And they even you know he's had Benny Barber there. He had um, Michael Gordon. So he's had some more, uh, unreal fullbacks and someone play, you can learn a lot off. I reckon. I um, Tyrell. Did you actually? Actually, you did too. Few, few games. <laughs> Twenty five kilos ago. <laughs> <laughs> I was only weighing eighty eight kilos. Eighty eight. Sorry, sorry. No, I was ninety two. Ninety two. Ninety eight. What are you now? Ninety eight. Oh, that's not too much. Um, <laughs> to Tyrell, yeah. For, for you, like, yeah, you're looking forward to. Um, was he? he did you boys so have was, him at the Dragons in yeah, the last he was couple of years? Recruitment or something. Well, he was yeah. an assistant before we got yeah. there, and then, and then when when I got there, he wasn't there at all, and then he come back as a recruitment. Yeah, yeah. So but I don't um, have much to do with Flano. Yeah, I guess in the coaching scheme, but um, I always talked to him. You know, when he was around the club, and um, I mentioned him the other day, but he brushed me. So yeah. See if I have a job next year. Must change his number. Change <laughs> yeah, his number. Right. Um, and that's, uh, no, no really cares about my opinion, but I think he, um, you know, he, he's a fantastic recruiter. He recruited that team to Cronulla and, mate, from outside looking in, you had Lukey Lewis, Wade Graham, Paul Gallen, Jimmy Maloney, Chatty Townsend, yeah. did I say Wado? Wado, like they're all guys who, some of them are nearly NRL caliber coaches and guys that, um, you know, just uh, inspiring leaders. So I think, you know, with what he has learned through them, uh, as well as his time in the NRL, 
um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do for our club. So, uh, you know, I involved the Dragons, so I still support the club. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Um, mate, you touched on speaking your mind and I, I had written <laughs> this down. I remember this video session at the Sharks and um, I think that Flano had this, this clip up where they'd scored a try on your edge. And I think Fafita jumped in and um, said, oh, yeah, yeah, like, you got to read that, bro. And you go, fucking, if, it, if you fucking worked in the middle, you effing fat fuck, we wouldn't have scored on the edge. <laughs> I was saying the whole room just cracked up crying. <laughs> Confirm or deny, would have that, that been how you reacted? That, bro. I think I'm... I think I've had a few head knocks, eh? Like, I can't remember that. Um, but that sounds like your personality. Yeah, it does. Like, yeah. a lot of people tell me what I've done in the past, and I'm like, did I even do that? Like, I can't even remember. But that does sound a bit like me, but what have only been, like, 21, 20 years old, yeah. so... Like, you were a baby, eh? I was a baby, man. Yeah. It's gone quick. I'm 28 now, so... Um, but, yeah, fuck. He's a bit like Blocker, you know? Just, <laughs> like, do your job in the middle, you fat. <laughs> Mate, it was all time. I, me I remember I was in tears <laughs> sitting there. It was either you or Jimmy Maloney speaking up and saying something. No, it was always a giggle. No, Jimmy's worse than me, man. Jimmy, <laughs> I probably rubbed off on Jimmy. He was my gym partner as well. He'd, oh, he'd wow, probably, that's a worry. <laughs> he'd, be two, he'd do two sets and walk out. Yeah. He's got like 40 minutes left in the gym. He's finished. He's, getting, he's driving out in the car. No, fuck. Literally, I remember 2017. It was like leading into the final. About two weeks out from the final. He goes, set down Jimmy's ear, boy. Don't worry, I fucking got you. Big game, Jimmy. We went out week one to the Cowboys. I'm like, I remember Mad Monday. I was in and going, where the fuck was big game, Jimmy? That came. Mate, he doesn't. Uh, doesn't like confidence. He doesn't do anything in the gym, but <laughs> fuck, when he steps on that field, man, he's he's a whole different thing, eh? Yeah. Like he's probably one of the best players I've played with. Yeah. Uh, for such a little fella. Yeah. Like he just, he's a tough bastard, and he just, yeah, he's um he's a competitor and. So that's self belief, I reckon, as well. Like, my young bloke was watching YouTube this morning. There was a, he threw an intercept to Val, and Val went up and scored. But I think Jimmy just he forgot about it straight away. Then he like leads the side around yeah. to, to win the game. Like goldfish Jimmy memory. Like he doesn't remember nothing. No, he's um yeah he's something special. But yeah, he was, he was a great player, big Jimbo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and there was one one more shark story. I, I, I went to I did ask Tyrell for one, but he didn't give me anything. I said, oh, you got sorry, anything sorry. on Birdie? Um, what are I doing now? You're in, uh, you've apparently travelled somewhere and there's a team meeting and the CEO, Lyle Gaw Gorman, was out the front. <laughs> and um, like, it might have been a I serious, it might have been like a serious meeting. I think it was like <laughs> before the finals and that. Was it? I think so. And, and I think Lyle's coming up soon and you go, F fucking F and O, Lyle! <laughs> <laughs> and the whole room's just lost their shit crying. Uh, yeah, uh, Chatty Townsend and that always... They always say that to me every time I see him. They go, F and O floor. <laughs> they always just message me all the time. And I'm like, I don't even know what he was talking about, to be honest. I think we were just in a circle, like in a huddle. Um, and he was saying something pretty serious. And I, after he finished, like everyone's quiet. And I just go, F and O floor. <laughs> Start clapping. And he just looks at me like, he's our CEO. And he's probably thinking, look at this fucking idiot. <laughs> well, <that's what laughs> fucking 21-year-old birdie fucking saying, F and O floor. Let's hope. It was a like message Val. Val was the one who tipped me into it. But he goes, no one else would have got away with it at the time except you. <laughs> well, I, I, get a, I get away with a fair bit, a little bit, but compared to other people. Yeah, nice, nice. I think it's just just how I am, but it is, mate. And that's like, like I said, I speak your mind. If you speak your mind, they know who you are and who, how, how you act. Yeah. If you're fake and then you come out and be someone you're not, they'll be like, "Who the fuck's this?" Yeah. What's he doing? And then you get in trouble for it, but because they know who, what I'm like, they're like, "Yeah, that's just." That's they appreciate just him being in. Six again. <laughs> uh, Tyrell, mate, you've uh, 21. Just got your first house, mate. How, how, how's all that going? And how are you feeling about that? For, yeah. for uh, I just want to thank you for uh, coming to me for your mortgages as well, mate. I really appreciate <laughs> yeah. you. Did you actually go to him? No. <laughs> <laughs> thank fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You're a dog, no. buddy. I'm still waiting for you to send your dogs back. I need to refinance. I might go to a different fellow. Yeah, back. mate. You're dog. No, I'll remember that. <laughs> no, the house is good. Um, settled in now. Took me about. I had it for a month. And I didn't move into a month after. He wants to sell it now, but. No, nah, not. <laughs> it's good. It's it's in Dapto, so it's not far where I grew up and played junior footy. So um, I got my best mate and um, my cousin with, living with me there. So they look after the joint when we're not around. Um, all as well, like nothing to do to it. Um, pretty big pad. It's got a pool, so can't wait for summer. Eh? It's too cold at the moment. But recovering the recovering nah, the pool. No, nah. see me in a cold bath. Bro. I'm in hot bath only. Eh? Yeah. You know any um, gardeners, but because he's. The tree at the back keeps dropping leaves. He doesn't want to clean it. Oh, clean it. <laughs> Any Wollongong listeners, if you own a, uh, a, a backyard cleaning landscape. business or landscaping, it reach out to our man Tyrell. Yeah. For free, but. For free. Yeah, <laughs> no doubt. 
Uh, and, the, and how, how important is that? Obviously, you know, you, you're 21. Even you, Jack, and I know you're very forward thinking financially and you, you've um, invested well, but, um, you know, how important is, you know, using this time you have playing professional rugby league to, you know, set yourself up for the 30 to 40 years after that and then having freedom of choice in what you do after rugby league and, um, you know, making the right choices now so you... You don't have to work a nine to five for the rest of your life when you do retire. <laughs> I think it's massive, eh? I, like, I wish I bought a house in Cronulla when I was there, which I didn't. And now I'm looking to buy a house in Cronulla, and they're like two million dollars more. I'm like, Jesus Christ! Don't worry, mate. I'll get. I'll squeeze that out for you for. Uh, I told you, I'm going different bloke. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I wish I started investing a little bit earlier in my time. I, I was kind of scared because when you're on them, when I was at the Sharks, I was on minimum wage. So when you're on minimum wage, you kind of like get nervous with you not having any money, but that's not how it works because you, you can borrow money off the bank, which I didn't understand at the time. Um, so I didn't really invest my money. I just saved it from my Sharks days. And uh, when I moved to Brizzy, I bought a house up there. I've still got that house, which is doing well for me. Bought a Lexus. Um, nah, I didn't. <laughs> Lexus? Yeah. Bought that Lexus when I first went to the Sharks. Yeah, you just said it, you the Sharks. Yeah, but that was just to get me from A to B. I was driving with Back on track, yeah. Come on, mate. <laughs> yeah, but then um, I think it's massive, like... Sony and, you know, even Bud, Bud's bought a house now as well. Yeah. Um, you know, them being 20, 21 years old, yep. I think it's the right move for them for sure. financially and in the long run. Um, and once they get their foot in the door more, like they've got another, you know, 15 years ahead of them. So, you know, they're going to be earning, you know, 600 plus K a year um, for the next 10 years, hopefully. Yeah. Um, and that's going to set them up massively uh, financially, like investing in property, even shares, shares now are massive. Um, yeah, so I think, you know, Sloney buying his first house now, I think he's got the foot in the door now and I think that's just gonna keep rolling over. He's gonna wanna buy another property and another property and then eventually eventually, when he's retired, he's not gonna have to work. Yep. And that's something I don't wanna do. I'd, mate, I'm getting old and I'm, I've had some near, near ending career injuries and I'm like, fuck, I don't wanna work, man, I wanna, no, nah, but you, mate, you need you need to fill your day, mate. You, no, I'll I've work. Spoken no, to you I'll about work. This. I'll, I don't want to be on the tools bar. I don't want to be digging holes. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. The they're the real, they're the real OGs. They're the ones waking up at six and digging holes. Like that's something I probably can't do. Yeah, I'll try it, but I probably won't be good at it. Yeah, I'll probably chuck a dummy spin and get angry, <laughs> walk off, come back, and be like, "Fuck, like, right, let's go. Let's, what are we doing?" Then they'll tell me what to do. I'm like, "Fuck this, I'm going. <laughs> so, mate. You would for sure. Yeah, 100%. You'd be the worst bloke to have as an employee. I'll be like, "All right, where's the broomstick? I'll just get." Really this mud over here and just start brooming it away but um yeah they're like the people that do that like they're massive because they, they don't earn much money and they're getting up every day doing that for the you know 30 to 40 years yeah, for sure um we're pretty lucky financially um but it's just being smart with your money obviously a lot of people that play footy that hasn't got much money before they'll get this money and just blow it you know what i mean because they get excited and they're like oh, i've never had this let's fucking start spending yeah where you gotta start probably you know you gotta have a I guess, a way of spending and saving um, and how much you can spend and save. So I think that's something massive. And Sloney's pretty tight with his money. He doesn't... He only no, that is, that me, is the, he only calling the me, kettle black, man. I know how tight you are, He only shouts me brekkie every now and then. But, I mean, um, he's that's pretty good saving money. Respect. So, um, you know, that's something that I encourage, you know, young fellas to do is to save money and he's pretty good with it, so... Good stuff, Tyrell. And have you got something like, was that just a personal thing you wanted to buy or someone sort of advising you, you know, what to do with your money? Uh, I was more personal. Like yep. Growing up in Houses Commission, um, was something that I've always wanted to do is buy my own house. And um, it was sort of a bet too. Like, oh, my brother bought his house at 21 and I got one at 20. So <laughs> uh, he's my older brother, so I wanted to get one up on him. And yep. um, that was something I, I did. But um, it was sort of a... A grateful moment too and a thank you to my nan, you know, because she raised us in housing commission. So um, to buy a house while she's still here and, you know, be able to show her and work her through it. And, um, you know, she's never been in a house that nice. So um, I guess now to bring her over whenever and for her to be comfortable now and, um, you know, it's just puts a smile on her face and that's what I want to do. Mate, that, yeah, that's unreal. And, uh, mate, when's the next one? Already forward thinking, mate. Definitely. You need a broker, mate. Year. I'm there if you Hopefully need me. next year or something like that. Can you stop? <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Um, no, nah, in seriousness, mate, you want to buy some land? Nah, some, let's go. Yeah, back put to some questions. units on it and that? Yeah, let's go. Is that, you just, yeah, I'll have to run the job site. You won't want to get dirty. It's, I'll have to do all the hard work. You do all the hard work and I'll just overlook everything. <laughs> Supervisor. You're good. But well, then I'll come to you for the mortgage broken. Okay, done. done. Deal?
done. <laughs> um, you know, what, what, what's the life of a rugby league player like? And, uh, you know, I was on the outside of looking in. People often say, oh, mate, they get paid too well. Um, you know, they get to live the life. You get to do what you love, which, you know, a lot of that is true. But then, you know, you've touched on your injuries and even you at a young age, you've been in and out of first grade. Obviously, you established yourself this year, but... Um, you know, then the club's not doing well this year. So, you know, you've got uh, the fans have an opinion and Joe Blow's got an opinion. Then you've yep. got to, you know, you've got to take the feedback on from the coach. Um, you know, you're with your teammates and trying to keep the mood up. Uh, you know, it definitely teaches you resilience and um, mental strength. But, um, you know, do you want to go into that a little bit? You spoke about injuries and stuff, Bertie, but, you know, even just dealing with the form and outside uh, opinion and views and, you know, how, how you zero in and, really keep your focus on what you're trying to do and achieve for yourself? Yeah, I've always been pretty strong-minded. Um, it just comes back to my dad and always teaching me, you know, to be strong-minded and be proud of who you are. But, um, you know, last couple of years when I've been in and out of grade, it's it sort of rocked me a bit because I didn't know how to handle it. And um, sort of being around these older guys that have been in the game a lot longer than me um, helps a lot, you know. Just, you know, I've got a close with um, Birdie and Mo by this year and, um, you know, having them guys there that have, I guess, done it all. You know, Bowie's been in grand finals, played Origin, Birdie's played Origin, won comps, and um, just leaning on them and, you know, getting advice from them guys. And, um, yeah, each and every day, you know, there's a challenge. You know, everyone can have an opinion on us. You know, we can't go to a job site and say, fuck, you're not laying the bricks right. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, that's what I mean. It, 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 it gets hard like that, but <coughs> I think just switching off from social media, um, you know, plays a massive part in um, finding a second hobby. Um, you know, me being from the country, I, I like to go out and ride the motorbikes and switch off that that sort of way, and you know, get away from you know, I guess the city in Wollongong and just do my own thing and um, you know, try kill time like that. But um, I don't know what do you like, buddy? He's like Tyrell Dudden, you know. You like <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> That's him. Um. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, mate. Nature's where it's at. Definitely, bro. Disconnect the reek. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, being a footy player, there's heaps of pressure. Obviously, you know what it's like firsthand. You know, you play a shit game, you're going to get people that are always got opinions on you or, or whatever you do. No matter what you do, you're always in the fishbowl. Yep. Um, and it's hard because, you know, you, you, try and, you try and play your best every week. You don't go out there to play shit or get injured or whatever. And it's always hard because people have opinions. And I think the biggest thing is to stay off social media because social media is the biggest killer these days that you know pe push people off the edge where whereas you play a bad game someone's going to write something or someone's going to message you personally and, and attack you and and that's the hard part like i think just not don't read anything about football i think as soon as you know you you got a job like people that work everyday jobs they don't go home and talk about their job i think when you're away from footy you just stay away from footy and just start living a normal life and then when you go to the footy you just be a footy player you know what i mean um i think yeah the the, the hardest part is just trying to stay off social media and not listening to to other people's opinions because it gets to you a little bit like obviously i've had injuries and all that kind of stuff i've played bad games i've played a lot of bad games and you know as a young kid growing up you always want to be that spotlight and be the good player and when you play good games you love reading about yourself you're like fuck yeah this is mad as soon as you play a shit game everyone hates you you're like fuck Fuck it, no, I've got to prove these wrong, you know what I mean? And, yep. you, and then you go out there and you play worse and you're like, fuck, fuck, fuck. Yep. So I think it's just, you know, you know what you're capable of. Capable of. Um, you, you've been playing it since you were five years old or when it, however long you've been playing. I think you just got to go out there and enjoy yourself. I think that's the massive part. Just enjoy playing footy and, and just think of what got you there and just keep doing that. I think that's the main thing. Mate. But that that's spot on, I reckon, and because you can't. You, and it, obviously, it's a bi it's big business. It's a, it's um, a big money industry. But at the end of the day, you started playing rugby league because you love the game and you love playing with your mates. And that that you can often forget that when you're winning and things are going great. That's what you you're on top you remember of the that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then when shit hits a fan, and <coughs> you, f you forget why you played the game and why you love the game. And um, mate, I've, that was really well said, Bertie. Well, thanks, mate. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I want to comp at the Sharks. I was yeah. on top of the world. Go to the Broncos. Yeah. Fought a shit. Yeah. Everyone hates me, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, that's just part of the footy, footy yeah. world. Like, that's what happens. But, I mean, in a way, you know what you're capable of. So, it's just like, you need to get yourself back there and you know what, what it takes to get there. Yeah. And you just got to take yourself back down memory lane and be like, all right, what made me start loving footy? 
And what made me, what what got me here today, is what you got to do, and just keep doing that, and just enjoy it, man. Like, it's an everyday job. Like people that don't play footy, they wish they could. Yeah. So I think we're we're pretty grateful for that, and we just got to do to our like just be our best, what we can be. Yeah. You know what I mean? So just enjoy it and just be happy. Like that's that's the main thing. Yeah. You, you've both touched on social media, and um, you know, Origin two was last week, and. There was Jerome Luai who, um, you know, he jumped on and put a post up after the game. And obviously he's sort of made himself public enemy number one up there. Um, mate, awesome player, still on the young fella, won two competitions. And, um, you know, there's sort of that tall poppy syndrome, I reckon, a little bit with things, uh, with him and the Panthers. And, um, you know, he sort of got some pretty crude things said to him. So I feel like he had every right to come out and say something. Um, but it's sort of a tricky one, you know. You, you probably should try and stay off social media, but at the same time, he's getting told certain things and people having a crack at him. Uh, he's got every right to protect himself and. Hundred percent. Like I don't yeah. know what's being said to him, but yeah. I, I can just imagine. Yeah. And like Drome's a player that plays with passion. Yep. And he and he wears his heart on his sleeve. Like he, he goes out there and he, you know people can call him a grub or whatever. Like I don't know him from bar so like I've never spoke to the fellow, but um, the way he plays footy, he plays with passion and pride. Um, I think for him, he probably wanted to just come out and have an opinion like everyone else does on on some on on him, um, and he just wanted to to prove his point. But I mean, in saying that, that's just adding f- fuel to the fire. You know, yeah. what I mean, that's gonna that's gonna go the wrong way with the media. Media, we all know what the jump media's, on that. Yeah. We all know what the media is like. They're gonna bash it up and make it sound worse than what it is. I think personally, it's not even a bad thing what he did. No. Um, He's probably been a realist, man. He's probably speaking his mind. Like, yeah. Who, who, who cares, really? Yeah. Like, yeah. if that hurts people's feelings, then you shouldn't go and hurt his feelings Correct. by saying things. Yeah. True? Yeah, it's so true. So, like, true. you, you want to go say something about him, but if he says something about you, oh, fuck, he said this about me. Oh, go, kicking go on, kicking like, shit up a wall, yeah. Well, you know, two wrongs don't make it right. Yeah. And that's, but that's our world now, right? Everything's on social media and you can talk about Tyrell watching TikTok videos 11.30 at night. Everyone's on social <laughs> media. And dances. <laughs> and, and everyone's con- connected to it. And mate, everyone can have an opinion at the end of the day, but you know, that stuff in there, I think there was death threats. Right. There's no need to say that shit. It's a game of no, rugby exactly. league. It's a game of rugby league at the end of the day. We spoke about it being people love to support New South Wales or people love to support Queensland. Well, they're, they're not- passionate. Correct. Like, everyone hates losing. Yeah. yeah. But I mean... Like I just said before, like you play a bad game, it doesn't mean you have to go and say go kill yourself or hope your mum or your sister or whatever dies. Like yeah. it's a game of footy, man. But whatever's in the media today, it's in the it's around the f- chips chips tomorrow. You know what I mean? That's Correct. what I've always said. Like no one's ever like what I done two years ago. No one even remembers what I done two years ago. Correct. But yeah, you, then you don't want to be saying that shit to someone because you don't know how that's going to affect them in a bad mood. Like if. Jerome took that exactly, shit personally. Yeah, like, you got, you got to everyone's re- got their opinion, but sometimes their opinion's best just to keep to themselves. Correct. Because, like, like I said, man is the biggest killer these days. Like he, like no one knows what Jerome's battling yep. outside of football. Mm. You can go say something to him, and that pushes him over the edge, and then that's it. You know yep. what I mean? Like, you, people got to realize, like, footy's not everything. Yeah. You know, people have lives outside of footy. Yeah. And he could be battling whatever. Like I don't know. Yeah. But like one wrong thing can go to him, and then. That's it. You know what I mean? You just never know. So I think it's just... Show a bit of respect. It's going to be nice, man. Yeah, like, be not, exactly. If you're going to say something, go say it to his face. And yeah. Then, and people, you respect that more. 100%. As long as it's not like 30 blokes around you trying to be show off, you know, grab him yeah, and say, 100%. Mate, I don't like how you carry yourself or I don't like the way you did that. But <coughs> well, I don't care if people like me or not. Yeah. Like, that's just who I am. But yeah. like, if you don't like me, then... But not everyone you has. Don't, a, you don't know me. But everyone, not everyone has that skill where it's water off a duck's back. Some people take shit personally and they don't have thick skin like you, Jack, which I do love. <laughs> um, so quickly, you know, we touched on a few things there, but you know, how, how good's going to train every day with 30 <coughs> blokes? And for me now, I'm f- three and a half years out of the game, and that that is probably the thing I miss the most is uh, the the locker room and the piss taking and having a laugh and trying to bring the mood up. And uh, you know, you, you're throwing tin for you, you're looking good. Well, you think you're looking good. You're feeling all right. Uh, throwing tin. Um, you know, do you like, like that? Jimmy's pop- tin or like Jimmy? No, not Jimmy. Well, how tin. It's like one d- <laughs> dumb bell. I'm, I'm done. Kim McGinnis tin. Kim McGinnis tin. <laughs> <laughs> but um, and then you know, you used to get the train at like five in the morning when we started at eight, like blocker. No, try and lose weight, but then you just does he really go to that five in the morning? <laughs> yeah, bro. Early does he really? Kind goes there early, brown noses a bit, come goes the trains. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I can respect that sort of attitude, that work ethic. 
<laughs> nah, I love Blocky. He's a good fella. Um, he just gets here too early for me. I'm. What time are you meant to be there? Seven. No, nah, like eight, 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 he gets there at five. But no, he gets there probably like Go, six. Seven. That's Goggins' mentality. I love that. <laughs> Blake Goggins, Blake what a man. Goggins. <laughs> Where's Big Goggins going? I'm, I'm, uh, no, I'm, I'm going to run through that? Utah, Salt Lake City with him soon. Um, <laughs> what well, after footy, like you're still only 21, so I guess you, you know, have you started to give it some th- um, thought? And I, I, we never really got into you know, you, you as a role model in the Indigenous community and. Um, you know, is that something you'd love to go into after football? Um, yep. And then I'll get to you, Jack. Yeah, definitely. Uh, last year when I was in, a, uh, in and out of bit of grade there, I, I went and started working at um, my local primary school that I went to and um, did some stuff there for the Aboriginal kids. And um, it's pretty cool because, you know, they're sort of similar background to me. Grew up, you know, not having, I guess, morals. Uh, sorry, the role models in their life and, um, you know, not having that support system and, um, that's something that you know I definitely want to get into is you know making a um, there's a thing called Clontarf I don't yep. know if you yeah yeah yep. Clontarf and you know they help kids transition into I guess the real life and um, you know, it's pretty cool to see because you know it gives them kids second chances and you know you don't have to be a footy player to make it you know you can go be a bricklayer you can you know just do anything and that's something that I want to you know to install in them is you know you not everyone's going to make NRO and um, you know, it's one of the hardest jobs to make, but, um, you know, there's always light at the end of the tunnel and, um, you know, it's definitely something I want to do is, you know, continue to be a role model for the next generation and, um, you know, hopefully start studying and get into that and, um, yeah, I want to start my own, I don't know what it would be like a, I don't know how do you say it, but start something to, like a program to help the next generation. Awesome, mate, and that's, it's so powerful and you, um, you can have such, such an effect on, the uh, the young kids e- even you know or all, all, all cultures because yeah um and there's a massive you know, pool down in the Illawarra too of you know indigenous kids and um you know we see them at you know all the community events and yeah all the home games on the hill there there's always a massive um I guess plot of boys and girls that are Aboriginal so it's yeah cool awesome and because yeah rugby league players we are you know <laughs> for whatever reason I don't know but kids just look up to you yeah. know, sporting stars and rock stars, and you know, it should be bloody doctors and yeah. um, these real life heroes out here, nurses and um, firefighters and police who would they're, they're the real life heroes, but they look up to us. And for you thinking like that and how you can um, be a positive role model, and um, I think you know, sometimes the rugby league players is something you probably do take for granted and you don't realize how influential you are, but it's something that you know, you really need to grab by the horns and um, try to be a positive role model to the younger generation. Jack, I actually know what you're going to be, you're, uh, you're going to be the project. Manager, I'm going to be on the tools, and uh, I'm not even going to ask what you can do after the <laughs> Don't footy. even bother. You already know. <laughs> I'll see you outside of this as much as I can. And I'll tell you what I want to you do. You do, brother. So. You do. But I'm, you know I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I can help you with that if you want to listen well, to me. No, uh, nah, whatever you want, mate. I told you I want to help you roll business. Whatever you want to do, I want you to be proactive because, like you said, you get days off. So, and this is where you need to use this time while you are a rugby league player yep. in season. Well, to I, go, enc- I encourage him to start studying. Yeah. I wish I studied at 20. Mm. I haven't but studied. I'm studying. Well, that's awesome. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> you, you, like you get days off where you can go and do something instead of going and having... So for your certificate. Oh, chair. Yeah. Chair. Oh, do you want me to leave the room? You just want to have a personal <laughs> chat over there. <laughs> okay. Um, but anyway, on to the next thing. Mate, let's touch well, on... I study uh, business, by the way. You do? Yeah. Nah, of Define business. <laughs> <laughs> business ethics. <laughs> You're so ethical, Jack. Is that off, um, that's off um, Billy Madison. Is it? I never watched it. Is it? it? No. Was that Billy Madison? <laughs> <laughs> nah, Sons of Anarchy, bro. <laughs> um, all right, let's go <laughs> a, have a bit of a laughy. What? Uh, what? You, who, who's your? Who's the funniest teammate you've had, Tyrell? Really? Yeah, definitely. God, I'm, he must have improved since I played. <laughs> <laughs> I've changed, bro. It's not what he says; it's what he does. How he does it? No, yeah. I agree. I agree. <laughs> You just think I'm th- funny, man. I do, I do. No, I love <laughs> your actions, bro. Like, like he says, it's like what you do. Like, you just don't give it, like, the F and Lyle and fuck you for feeding your fat. Just like, start loving people. Yeah, you just <laughs> you, you tell it how it is. And what about you, Birdie? You can't say me because I'm in the room, mate. You can say anyone else you want. Funniest. Well, you can't say yourself. I don't know, man, eh? Hey. Um, Curry's funny. Was Cur- yeah, Cur- Curry's, Curry's like, funny, but, like, he's, like, yeah. He's ridiculous. But you're more laughing at him? Yeah, I'm not laughing. Laughing. What about Maloney? He's, yeah, just tor- he's funny, torture, though. He's like, torture. I don't know, eh? Like, told you, man. I've got a bad memory, eh? What about your least favourite um, teammate outside of Paul Vaughan? 
<laughs> when are you two gonna start punching on, bro? We need to start talking about <laughs> boxing. I've been boxing lately, man. You they just like each other. Uh, no, nah, nah, he, wanna, he wasn't my other. favorite teammate, but uh, something happened. I messaged him on Instagram and he talked it up, said he would now. He's not doing it, so oh. I've just let that ship sail. Oh, he said when he comes back from fight, I'll, uh, I'll get something for you. I'll stay fit to when he's back from I'll England. I'll get something for you if you want to fight. Who? You out the front. Let's Big go. Roy Barnes. <laughs> and then what about uh all right we, you, you you won a comp so mad monday like what what was the mad monday after you won a competition like like was that unbelievable what kind of question is that well in, in cronulla like they'd never won a competition Fuck yeah no it was, 50 all, years. it was good man i just went home and slept for <laughs> i didn't go out or anything like, nah didn't party in that like it was pretty, pretty but any funny stories like chilled. you can share with the viewers and watchers <laughs> Not really, eh? Like, no, that's confidential. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> we got a reporter over here. Huh? <laughs> I've got I'm not speaking anything. I've, got, I've actually got a funny Jimmy Maloney one from when I played with him. You'll freaking love this. It was 20, 2011 when that day the NRL team made the grand final and lost to Manly. I played in the Reggies. We lost in who was he? Warriors. Warriors. We lost the Reggies grand final at, at Warriors. Who was that? Warriors. 2011. 2011. And then our, I think our under twenties yeah, yeah. won. They beat the Cowboys in extra time. Um, so that was on Sunday night. So we stayed in Australia. Yeah, we got Warriors then as well. Yeah, I was Warriors then. Yeah. yeah, I just said that. Obviously, I was at the main. He's got fired so. like forty nil. Or something. Huh? No, they only just lost to me only in the NRL. I played yeah, Reds. Like forty nil. No, they didn't. That was Melbourne Storm. Oh. that was two. Uh, two no, I got a bad memory, bro. That was Russ Aiken, bro. Right? Yeah, that was Russ Aiken. I remember that Grand Finals. I was actually wearing a Warriors jersey around. Were you actually? Yeah. Everyone got them well, behind sure. the Warriors. <laughs> no, because Manly were like the big dogs back they then. They always win. Yeah. So I was yeah. like, I'm going for the underdog. And yeah. wore me mad um, Stacey Jones shirt. Well, maybe, no, you, maybe you brought us down and that's why they lost. Or a Jimmy Maloney shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Maloney on the back, number six. <laughs> it would have been your size back then. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, anyway, so that was Sunday night, Monday night, and then Tuesday morning we've gone back to... Um, it was me, him, Simon Mentoring, and the taxi driver to Jimmy Maloney's house. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he turns up at his house and his missus has put his stuff out the front. And Jimmy's there. Yeah, like, you know how sweet Jess is, but she obviously had enough of Jimmy, which I don't blame her for. And anyway, he's opened up the mail thing and he's <laughs> yelling out to Kato. Kato was like one half and gone, Kato! <laughs> Kato! <laughs> like, opened the door. Anyway, he like, eventually opens the door and... Goes upstairs and he, he was dressed as Freddie Flintstone. I'll never forget that. <laughs> <Freddie Flintstone. laughs> and anyway, he's taking ages and I'll, I'll go to Simon Manning. I go, watch this. I go, I'll go up and sort it out. I go upstairs and just go, get the fuck out of me, lads. <laughs> get the fuck away from me. And, and then I'm looking at Jimmy and he's like getting scolded like a naughty boy. And then he comes out, bro, and all day I just get looking at him and like crying because he had that, this Freddie Flintstone <laughs> wig on. <laughs> But mate, I've got a thousand stories of Jimmy's that you can't repeat, but that was just a fun, little funny one. <laughs> That'd be funny seeing Jimmy in the action like that. Oh, mate. Well, what was he like he when he's... himself as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, mate, yeah, yeah. He's all bark, no bite. Just as the big dog there. 100%. Um, so there's nothing good happening in 2016. Ah, uh, not really, man. It was just... Oh, like, there's a few things documented, actually. But, uh, <laughs> uh, it was all right. Like, the night we won, we went back to the Sharks Leagues Club with our families, and then all the fans come back and... Had a few drinks that night, but I actually went to bed early that night because, yep. like, I always saved myself for the day after. And then, and then things started going off a little bit there. We went down to Northies and um, crowd surfing and all that kind of stuff. It wasn't really like no that was Jimmy again, wasn't it? Jimmy was up crowd surfing. Uh, Jim, nah, I can't say what Jimmy was doing. <laughs> <laughs> Thought he was a rock star, which he is. Hundred percent, he, he is. Um, uh. Nah, Jimmy's um, he's good. He is. What are uh, so if I was gonna say most annoying teammate for you, that's got to be him, surely. There's no one else more annoying than him at the oh. Dragons now. Oh, who's the most annoying teammate at the Dragons, actually? Blocker. Blocker? He's annoying to me. Really? <laughs> Sloney? He always touches me ear and that. I'm oh, just sitting there and he comes up and like fingers my ear and that. I'm like, fuck, <laughs> leave me alone, bro. <laughs> just always wants to touch me, starts getting my boobs in there. Like, I want to touch your boobs. <laughs> I want to touch his boobs. They're bigger than mine. <laughs> <laughs> Sucking in the titties. <laughs> oh, bro. What's the team, mate? <laughs> no one? Come on, say it. I know you will hear you want to say. No, I can't. Turn the cameras off. Yeah. Turn the cameras off. <laughs> no, no, no. Probably Birdie as well. Yeah. What? Yeah. Oh, hey. No. Fuck. Yeah, you get home today. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. That's him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got you, bro. I got you. <laughs> hey, Southern <laughs> Train Line. All good. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, well, boys. One, bedroom, one bedroom apartment. Three better. Oh, oh, take this out. You used to drive a van down before. We used it. to have the the old dragons bus. Yeah. But mate, is there anyone that lives in Sydney now other than Birdie? Uh, Ben Hunt. No. Yeah. Like, Who? Uh, Cody Bartlett. <laughs> <laughs> Matt <laughs> Dufty. Nah, uh, um, <laughs> no, Sua. Is Sua in Sydney? Yeah, Sua's yeah, in Taomonga. Taomonga. Um, oh, you can only get the, get the um, bus back. I think. Um, what else is there? That might be it now. Oh, yeah. there's a couple. Because Woodsy was there, but Woodsy's over the family now. Like Lex, a couple of young boys. Yeah, a couple of the young fellas. Um, it's bad, yeah, there's not much. It's all. Dylan Egan. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's all well along, boys, eh? Yep. So, yeah. Nah, yeah. Oh, well, boys, hey, thanks for coming along for the chat, mate. It was good, good to get to know and show everyone what the real Jack Bird's like. Yeah, um, yeah. He's an OG. He's the Berkeley brawler. Don't go, give you any trouble <laughs> was, in I'm Berkeley. I'm in the boxing now, bro. So I'm just, uh, <laughs> no, I'm going to call Lomax. I'm going to call Gal out Gal. for a bit of cash. <laughs> I know there's a fella you were talking about finding down the real way. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, nah, shit. Who? Coops. He wants to fight Brock Lesnar, I think. Yeah, yeah I know. You'll see. But uh, nah, it was, it was, it was good. It was good. good <laughs> yeah, no, I'm Jane. Oh. But he wants to be UFC. But nah, genuinely, it was a uh, great chat, Birdie. And for Tyrell, mate, um, mate, for a young guy, you can see you've really got your head on your shoulders. And Thanks, um, mate, you're setting the example for the next generation. And um, mate, uh, we'll be following your journey, uh, journey very keenly over the next few years and seeing how. Uh, you boys probably great. Well, I work at the Dragons anyway, but uh, especially you, mate. Carving up the field for years to come. Thank but you, thanks for coming along for the chat. F for no fly. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, boys. Thanks, man.